Great, thank you very much for the introduction and um, thank you everybody for, for coming to my session. Um, I'm glad to be at the Android Submit. It's the first time I'm uh, speaking at the conference. I was uh, about to say that this, uh, I'm glad to be back in the States, but uh, not this year. I guess we will have to wait until the pandemic is over. And uh, as you've probably seen in the first slide, my session is going to be about practical security for Android developers. Uh, yes. um, this is my short Ego slide. Um, I'm, um, I'm yeah, currently working as an Android freelancer. I've been doing Android since uh, 2008, pretty much the first version, so um, those years um, um, right now. I'm a member of the Google Developer Expert Crew. I was born in Spain. I uh, live at the moment in Munich, in Germany. And this is my Twitter handle. If uh, you want to check the last things I'm doing or um, you want to ask me any questions, happy to answer if I, uh, if I know the answer to your questions, of course. So how did it start uh, my engagement with security? In September 2011, I was developing apps for, uh, for a bank in, uh, in Spain. And well, you know, banks have uh, some strict regulations, uh, particularly in Europe, and uh, that was also after the crisis, uh, strict um, security protocols that they need to follow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was a bit more in charge. Um, while I was developing Android apps, I, um, I got some exposure to, um, well, security topics on, uh, on Android, that's, uh, well, there were um, always a few words coming up in many conversations, such as SSL, secure storage, making sure that the, the clients uh, or the, the information that is being safe on the device is secure, obfuscation, things such as certificate pinning, making sure that the connection with the, um, the bank server is validated, etc. So uh, what's security in Android? Uh, security is about reducing the frequency, frequency and impact in our application of security issues. But this is a terrible definition. It's, you know, this, uh, a circular definition is a definition that is circular. Um, so we should never include the word we're trying to define in the description. Let's try to show a few uh, examples and um, practical things. So security in Android could be things such as uh, using a proper SSL. It is 2020, so there is no excuse to not doing it. Securing the user data, when information gets stored in a device, it should be uh, <clears throat> um, safe there and um, not, um, well, easy to modify or uh, tamper with. Um, it's about avoiding code injection, um, leaking of information, etc being protected against man-in-the-middle attacks where um, um, attackers can say essentially take our credentials or access to um, um, our private information. Um, it's about using cryptography properly, etc, etc, etc. It's, uh, it's always good to see if, um, um, the historical bad examples. I think this is also, like, like in interviews when you are in tech, I, one of the Questions I like more, it's, uh, you know, when you're interviewing for an Android position, um, generally it's like how to do things well. But one of the questions I like is like, well, how can you create a memory leak on, uh, on Android? So then uh, I think that takes uh, kind of start interesting conversation. So um, same thing with security. Let's see some things that some companies did and um, they were um, bad and so we can learn from their mistakes. So just some random company here, what's up? Uh, I haven't checked in a while the current state of uh, WhatsApp, but um, I think it has improved quite a bit since uh, 2011. So in 2011, it was reported that their communication was not encrypted. Um, um, that means that it was done without SSL um, and um, uh, it took them a year to get fixed. Um, um, yeah, that was really bad. So uh, when you are using a communication that is not encrypted, connected to a Wi-Fi network, everybody can see all your communication. This is for a communication app, it's really bad. So in 2012, somebody proved that the, uh, the state, the status in WhatsApp could be changed doing a REST call um, just with the phone number and the status that you wanted to change. No sort of verification whatsoever. So this somebody, um, so probably the same person or um, who cares, maybe another person, uh, created a website as a proof of concept where you could go into the phone number, the, st the status and change it on the, on the uh, target device. Well, WhatsApp solved this. They blocked the website and <clears throat> problem solved. It happened a little bit like with ostriches. When they see a danger on the wild, they put their head under the earth and they expect the lion to run away. I don't think that's a very um, <clears throat> um, good uh, strategy for, um, for the future. 
Um, another problem in 2012, um, WhatsApp was storing all the conversations in an encrypted um, SQL um, database. This was done in the external, on the external storage on the device, um, not on the internal one. So, you know, external is, um, can be accessed uh, from essentially any app. And um, the encryption was the same for all devices. It was not taking um, <clears throat> um, components to add some entropy, such as um, the phone number or the hardware ID or anything. It was um, just the same one. So once the token was out, uh, everybody could uh, unencrypt any um, WhatsApp conversation having access. I actually created this exploit um, called WhatsApp Conversation Burglar, which, uh, yeah, of course, was uh, taken down um, due to a claim from, uh, from WhatsApp. Um, and the exploit was a library that allowed you to integrate it in another app and access this database and it done per email on the background and um, what well, essentially you could just, as we will see later, take one real app, a video game, you just could uh, inject this code, uh, upload it to one of those um, free APKs websites and uh, bang, you will be start getting a lot of um, uh, conversations from uh, from random people on the internet. Well, the exploit uh, is, was taken down, but it was essentially something like this. If the file, um, this file from here is just uh, send it per email and that's it. You get it on your email or what you could, uh, if you want it to upload to um, any FTP uh, or any repository or whatever. SwiftKey, um, now acquired by Microsoft. Um, so SwiftKey, oh, I forgot to write here the year. I think it was probably around the same time, 2012, 2013. So somebody took the Swift key APK and implemented a key, um, took a key logger and injected this key logger within the Swift key APK by doing some code injection that we will see later. Then this person exactly converted the APK from a Swift key and uh, into Baxmali, then the key logger into Baxmali. He took the relevant parts, uh, combined them, and distributed the APK in one of those websites. Luckily, this person was uh, a nice person, and what uh, he did was to, uh, well, all the key login that he was getting uh, on his backend, he was just changing all the characters with an X or a Y or something, or random characters. And you could actually see uh, when you were uh, using his fake uh, Swift key APK on his website that the content you were writing was there. He was just, you know, not malicious, but and just wanted to prove this, uh, that, that it was actually possible. Um, Facebook. Facebook has stored the cookie and encrypted uh, in the in the local database. Um, well, you know, local database is accessible in rooted devices. Um, um, we're fine until there. And the problem is that the mobile cookie works uh, for the same browser as well. So, you know, theoretically, you could take this cookie, take it out, and uh, start using it on the on the browser. So something more ideal would have been to not store the cookie, maybe store some token that gets to, needs to get renewed, or that would be a cookie with a different name. But um, um, yeah, and, and, and it was actually possible to just log in from a, from a browser. And um, well, there was like, a, a, at that point, not that heavy protection of, oh, you're coming from a new um, device. Do you want to, do you need to validate per email or whatever? Let's gonna see some quick wins. Um, well, if you're not using SSL, just use SSL. So it's 2020, you have free certificates. Um, there is no excuse to not use them. Um, in fact, if you want to see what are the consequences of not using it, you can install something like Charles on your computer. And uh, well, Charles is a bit more complex. You can install a certificate and you're able to decipher the um, HTTPS communication. But um, here, for example, I open this no SSL.com without any uh, SSL. And you can see everything on that communication. You can access to all the headers, uh, payloads on the on the request. It's, it's essentially like walking naked in a city. Um, use internal storage. Um, remember WhatsApp? You don't want to put all your uh, relevant information where everybody can access it. And you should avoid the modes uh, wall readable and wall readable. They are generally a bad idea. And of course, encrypt uh, local files uh, uh, where it is relevant or sensitive. If you're using external storage, don't store anything sensitive. And you should consider using the security library and encrypted file. And uh, perform validation on external files. Files can be tampered if they're critical to your business or to your app. Um, assume that um, there is going to be a malicious user that could um, potentially change them, um, save them, and um, yeah, um, make any sort of attack to your app. Using encrypted file is super easy. Um, so you can see here essentially that we are um, 
this is how we write an information. Essentially, we call the master key builder. Uh, we define a file to write. We specify the, the encryption schema we want. Um, AES, AES 256 is always a good idea. And then the file content. That's it. And here is how to read it. Same process, but uh, the other way around. Um, we just essentially specify the schema we have used to uh, encrypt the, the information and uh, um, yeah, take the, the, uh, the file, decode it, and get the plain text uh, information stored there. If you're using content providers, are you close to interacting with other apps? Then you should be using Android export defaults. This prevents them from uh, interacting with your app using content providers. It's only your apps, only your company. You could use something like Android protection level signature to prevent uh, apps with a different signature to access your, um, your own app. And again, perform validation on external files. Don't assume that uh, uh, those files are going to claim, claim to you. Um, so this uh, uh, first line from here, um, Android grant permissions true, allows flag grant read jury permission and write jury permission. And this second one, when we set it up as false, indicates that only the jury values that have been specified in this grant jury permission can use the read jury and write jury permissions themselves. Um, SMS, be aware of SMS. They are neither encrypted nor authenticated. Um, you only need this read SMS permission, um, so any app can actually declare it and access your uh, um, all your messages. So um, um, yeah, um, be thoughtful when you're when you're using them. Um, expect malicious users to, for example, um, well create apps that access your uh, messages, try to authenticate somewhere, or send you wrong contact. Actually, just for context, these SMS are being uh, used massively for authentication, even if they're um, you have need to pay for them, right? But from um, also from the same time I was working at this bank, they provide warranty of arrival, something that. Um, push notifications can provide out of the box. And for things such as banks, they need to ensure that the user receives the SMS in order to perform this uh, transfer. And um, yeah, because it's a very regulated business. So that's why they are everywhere. If you're using SER preferences, um, uh, you should be using the private mode. And uh, uh, exactly, so that way only your app can access the information within the share preferences files. But if you want to share data across apps, you should not use share preferences objects. Instead, uh, you should other, uh, follow other steps in order to share data securely across apps. Uh, input validation. SQL injection is still a thing, even if we have uh, forgotten about that with all those frameworks. So um, it's easy to get um, an, an injection um, um, by manipulating any sort of input data. Um, um, for that, we can create these um, um, statements in uh, SQL where we pre-compile the SQL query. Um, it's called a parameterized SQL query. And hence, we protect ourselves from injection. So this is always a very good idea. Um, yeah, input validation, how can we validate it? So um, if you are working with sensitive content and you can't uh, sort of calculate in a hash for it and see that is the one uh, that you're expected, expecting, then you should do this and then if that's the case, you keep working with the content. See that this function from here calculates, calculates the hash. It's actually done on a, uh, on a, uh, on a not on the main thread because it can take a little bit of time to calculate this um, hash. So, yeah, this is another idea to, um, to implement. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, keep libraries updated. If you're using Google Play services, make sure that uh, it's updated on the device where your app is installed. This check should be done as asynchronously as well uh, of the UI thread. And if the device isn't up to date, maybe uh, you want to consider uh, whether the user can log in or not. And in general, many library updates include um, um, they include, uh, uh, well, like fixes or security issues. So we're not only talking about Google Play, but in general about uh, libraries in, uh, um, in your Android app. By default, web views, uh, if you're using them, they don't do JavaScript. You need to manually call this method, um, set JavaScript enable, and then they work. Finally, I think that uh, because we copy paste a lot of code in, in, uh, in Slack, in, sorry, in a Stack Overflow, it works a little bit like a gene that keeps being procreating and uh, expands its gene pool. So one initial person used this set JavaScript enable, now it's in all the code bases around the world. And sometimes it's not required. So if you're not doing JavaScript, you should not enable it. Um, right. So if you're using JavaScript interface, do it with care and limit the sources. Don't just uh, call it uh, 
uh, fearless uh, less on, on, on your code and add it everywhere because it can lead to problems. You're, you're essentially loading um, JavaScript code into your web view and it's code that wasn't delivered with the app, so it, sometimes it's not a good idea. And also use clear cache to remove files locally. Credentials, don't store username and password. Instead, what we should do is to log in first and substitute with a short lift token and use this token and uh, refresh it on a periodic basis. For cryptography, again, use the security library. You don't need to reinvent the wheel and absolutely not implementing your own crypto solution. For this time I was working at this bank, um, they, they actually were a bit scared about using general cryptographic solutions and somebody had the general idea of, well, let's gonna create our own, um, uh, our own crypto library to encrypt him. So, you know, it's, I cannot even finish that. So that's a terrible idea. Things have been tested, they have been developed. Um, so there are many libraries in Android will have the security library that we should be using rather than making experiments uh, that we should be doing at, at high school. And if you're gonna choose an algorithm two, five, six bit AAs, it's always good for commercial purposes. Um, dynamic code loading. Um, I think this is more of an easy thing, but it happens sometimes. And this is loading code on our app that hasn't been delivered with the app itself. So make sure it runs with the same permissions you have defined on the app. Um, I think this is a this is a trust breach with your user on the on the contract on the virtual contract you sign when they don't load the app, and always verify its origin. Um, yeah. So uh, native code. Um, it's never too bad to. Um, make an, an auditory on any native code that you're creating because um, there are problems such as uh, off by one errors, buffer overflows, etc., that can happen, are very easy to uh, detect and, uh, and debug. Custom CAs. Um, so um, we can sometimes we have this, uh, we need to use a custom um, 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 certificate. Um, um, certificate authority and normally in the code what we end up writing it's uh, well if this is the authority then just bypass it and so we can connect with our um, test environment for example this is a terrible idea we'll see later on an example how uh, we can uncompile that's essentially a boolean flag on our smiley code so you just can uncompile change it and recompile the app and suddenly you just can access anywhere so don't ever do that you can better handle it on the manifest you can add your uh, uh, your custom CA and then it will work out. Defer permissions. We always say when we're writing code that the best code you write, the best code is the code that you don't write. I think it's the same with permissions. The best permission is the permission that is never granted. If you need to use a permission that is not a central or a key part of your application, just defer and redirect users to applications that can handle them. For example, here, um, if uh, we're trying to handle contacts, so we just Call this intent, um, then the user has to choose an app that, um, ins that um, is able to handle the context. Certificate pinning. Well, certificate pinning is, is something amazing. It's uh, passing a, um, a certificate that is not the real certificate as your own certificate, and the app accepts, accepts this certificate, and uh, well, you start sending all your information to a source that you don't, don't want to do. It's actually easy in Android to fix this. Um, you can actually um, add these lines um, on the, uh, including the, the has code of your, of the certificates that, um, that you want to communicate with. And those are the only ones that are going to be allowed. Um, there are, however, some, uh, while I was doing research for this talk, um, um, I, I saw a couple of tools that are amazing. They're called Frida and Objection. Um, Objection is a toolkit actually for mobiles running or, or powered by Frida. And it's amazing because they bypass SSL pinning, so they don't fucking care. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing the magic they're doing. I didn't have time to fully check that thing, but I started checking this call from here. If you Google for <coughs> um, this uh, guy, Ole Andre Batla Rapnas, <coughs> based in Norway, he's the, the guy behind uh, this tool. Um, reverse engineering, what's reverse engineering? Well, it's obtaining source code from a compiled source. Um, why Java is bad? <clears throat> well, um, Java, the original Java machine, and um, this is something historical, was designed to run on a TV cable set top box. So uh, as such, it was defined to have very few uh, opcodes and instructions, so it could run like this on, on essentially in the device, on a, on a wash machine, and um, that was its, its main objective. So um, 
the current design of the GVM is actually independent of the Java development kit, the GDK. And in other, so in other words, the language and libraries may change, but the GVM and the opcodes are fixed. So this means that if Java is prone to the compilation, now it's always likely to be prone for the compilation. And in many cases, you see that the compiling a Java class is easy as running a, a, a Unix command. So um, I saw somewhere on Twitter back in time that compiled Java is essentially open source code. Um, I didn't find the original tweet, um, but um, if any of you know it, I would uh, love to see it again. Um, so yeah, there are a few things when it comes to uh, reverse engineering. Um, in general, you should not, uh, decompile, recompile, and pass it off something as if it's your own, just by changing the name. But you should not try to sell it, of course. And in the, if the license agreement forbids explicitly decompiling, do not decompile, and don't decompile to remove protection mechanisms. There is actually a few precedents. In the US, there was the precedent of Sega versus Accolade, and uh, well, uh, well, Accolade was accessing the uh, SEGA API because they wanted to get whatever information. And the court actually ruled in favor on Accolade, of Accolade judging that the reverse engineering constituted fair use. Um, then on, there was also another case of Atari against Nintendo when, uh, that went against Atari under very similar circumstances. So, you know, um, justice is uh, non-deterministic. Um, yeah, in uh, Europe, uh, the situation is a bit uh, uh, yeah, um, friendly. Um, we are under the directive of the legal protection of computer programs, which generally allows the compilation, uh, but only to interface our program and if they are not protected. So as a more or less uh, uh, rule of thumb, you can do it to understand interoperability, interoper interoperability, create a program interface, and you can do it to create a copy inside. Uh, there are bad uh, purposes that lead us towards uh, reverse engineering. Um, malware can do things like code injection, downloading from obscure sources, um, and privacy leaks such as password stealing, personal data, etc., or cheating, asset manipulation, score manipulation, etc. On the other hand, it can be an educational tool. We can do it to research our bugs, to check our own mistakes, to make interfaces with uh, uh, APIs that are otherwise not export, and just to learn. There are a few tools that are available for this. Um, Dex2jar that essentially converts um, um, a class in uh, Dex files into Java. Uh, GDGuy, it's, uh, this is our um, jar inspector. Uh, you can see that this is essentially like uh, opening an um, <clears throat> um, ID, like IntelliJ. An APK tool. So uh, um, I think I'm good on time. So I wanted to make a very small um, um, demo here. Let me see if I can. So I'm starting my emulator. I hope that doesn't blow my star, my entire computer. So I have a very old Hello World APK. Let me actually see if I can install it. Okay, so if I install this APK, now it should be installed and I open it now. Then we see something like uh, Hello World Android. So let's gonna do something interesting here. Uh, okay, I think you should see this a little bit better. So I'm gonna take a APK tool to uncompile. I have this on my desktop. Yeah. So I'm gonna call APK tool. I'm gonna call the what is it? Compile and then Hello World dot APK. Right. So this. Uh, okay. I well I already did it. So. I was checking a little bit the, you know, the demo gods. Uh, they always want you to practice before. So um, yeah, um, it's uncompiled here. Um, so we have this, uh, if we can here, we have these little files, hello world is Mali, R is Mali. If we open this one from here, let me select, uh, this is the main, essentially our, this is a hello world, so it just includes uh, one class, not like the hello wall in 2020 that uh, generates uh, like easily a dozen classes that you'll never use. So this is how it looks. Uh, this is, uh, if you've been working with ASM or assembler, it res resembles this sort of, uh, uh, of code, right? We essentially have like some addresses, a few methods, uh, very low level that handle everything. I wanted to make this joke, so I changed hello wall. Originally this was Android. I wanted to change to be evil and write iOS and um, recompile the app so you can see how it works. 
So if uh, I make a great, um, this is to debug, then I need now to specify this folder in order to build and uh, uh, recompile APK. I think this will work. Great. So this generates the APK again. And now, of course, now uh, I will forget about that. Uh, we need to uh, sign it, right? So, uh, because if we don't sign the, the file, it cannot be installed uh, on the on the device. So I'm just using a, uh, wait. Let me see if I become final with that. Okay, the last phrase I have is one, three. Oh, I'm able to open the file. Don't I have the file here? Created it. Uh, uh, okay, or where has it been created? That's a problem with uh, the live demos that sometimes they don't uh, fully work. But uh, no problem, of course. I have this new hello. That's the one that I have. Um, uh, I was practicing before. I recompile. And uh, if I uninstall the, this hello world, and then I install this other hello world that I have created, uh, I will uninstall, then I'll come to my new hello world. So you can see the hello world iOS. So we have essentially just taken the previous one, recompiled, just making this a small change, and then it works. This is something very simple, but imagine the probability, the things you can do with this. For example, you could compile your own app and generate the smiley code for a toast. Then you just can inject the, uh, the code. You can make this thing that this guy did, which is like creating this keylogger, injecting the, key, the code for the keylogger here inside, redistribute the app, so the possibilities are crazy. You generally need to play a little bit with those uh, lines and uh, register uh, where you store the parameters and lines and et cetera, because that changes the more code you write, but it's, uh, it's essentially everything is, is possible. Um, I wanted to use as well the chance to, uh, well, if we use this dex to jar, um, what was the command? Grep uh, yeah, so if we call this command from here, um, shdex tools, uh, blah, 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 that will, uh, well, it will take a crackme APK. The crackme APK, it's, uh, well, a small crackme that uh, I downloaded. It's this uh, uh, this file from here. Crackme as are just like little games or play fields where, you know, for example, here you have to enter a name, then a serial check. So it's like a game for, okay, let's gonna see if you can find out how it works. So. Um, I'm uh, just gonna show you very shortly how the uncompile or the exactly the we have transformed this into a Java file with dex to jar. I have opened this with a uh, um, with uh, with a GDG, and this is how it looks. So it's pretty readable, right? That's uh, it, it's not a code that fully compiles, and there are a few weird things that you need to fix. But essentially, we can see what they do. They uh, take the uh, the device ID, the serial number, they substring them, take the first six ones, then they make an OR and uh, combine them and uh, that's it. Then it, uh, you bypass the security. So um, as I've mentioned before, Java is um, essentially open source code. So um, uh, let's get back to the presentation. I think I still have a few minutes. So um, how can we protect our code? Uh, so we can protect code 100%. Uh, it's a stochastic system. Uh, it's always going to be a way or a combination of a constellation of possibilities that is going to happen, but we want to make it very hard or economically not feasible to put a team of people trying to hack it. Some ideas, you can write different versions of the app. Um, that has been a standard marketing pra practice for some years. Um, they were um, delivering like the um, is it two, not two. I have to correct that. So um, um, you can deliver one that has some features, another one that has the full features. As you can, have seen before anyway, if you deliver one app that includes everything, that's extremely easy generally to bypass. It's normally like this flavor. So in the case, for example, of the Crackme, you don't even need to uh, go and do all this hashing and, type and, and guessing the, the, uh, the final uh, key. You could essentially go to the place where it checks if that's right and just change it from yes to no, and then, um, you know, it will like uh, uh, allow you to go through. 
Um, yeah, um, so this was one idea. Um, using obfuscation. Um, so obfuscation essentially is just taking our code uh, and making it unreadable by inserting dead or irrelevant code, extending loop conditions, and interleaving methods. Uh, in Android, uh, we just need to do this, and R8 is activated by default before it was powered, and then it will work. You just need to maintain a configuration file to make sure it works with new um, uh, libraries. Um, Using web services, most of the logic should go into the backend. The app just should be a dummy uh, client that uh, has some sort of presentation. And using na native methods, I wrote this article here some time ago. You can check it out. And um, by using native methods, we obscure more the process of generating uh, tokens. Um, it's a little bit long to explain uh, on this talk, but if you search uh, for this article, you'll see it uh, explained with some sample code. Checking root. Um, if you are using Firebase, you just need to call this method, and it will tell you if the device has been root or not. And based on that, you just can make some assumptions or not. I think actually Facebook doesn't log you in if you if the if uh, it's root or if the if you're using an emulator. Uh, right. So um, this is the function inside. They just try to see if this APK file exists or if they can. Uh, there is this uh, super user uh, file in system X in, and if that's the case, then um, yeah, you're root. And uh, using Dexwire, um, Dexwire, as uh, we've seen in this um, short example when I have sold the Java, the JAR file, strings, for example, are not um, um, obfuscated by R8 or ProWire. Um, Dexwire does it. It's also extremely expensive, and by the way, not affiliated with them, but um, some companies might um, want to benefit from this. Some final thoughts. Um, yeah, I hope you have learned something new today. Uh, if that's the case, I would be super happy. Um, yeah, I'm, I think that uh, when we are um, trying to create a secure system and securing our app, we are never going to be 100%. Some industries and some apps are more critical than other ones, but we want to make it difficult enough by applying a combination of measures that will deter any potential attacker on um, um, yeah, molesting our users or um, uh, being any security threat to our users. The only way to be uh, fully protected from uh, hackers, uh, it could be in a house in the mountains, which, um, well, um, um, maybe it's also another option if you're too tired of the IT industry. A uh, couple of links I think are a good read. Uh, Google developers documentation on security uh, or Android developers documentation on security. They include here a few uh, topics and some code samples and recommendations. And uh, I like this Google security blog. From time to time, they post things about how Android handles security and stuff. So it's, uh, I think it's always a good read. That has been everything. You've been a fantastic public. I'm uh, sorry I could, was not able to meet you in person, but um, I hope you had fun and uh, uh, you learned something today, as I said before. So now let me get back to, uh, I've been here in Slack and uh, I think there should be somewhere uh, some questions or some messages. Uh, we do have a couple of questions in the chat and the Zoom. Uh, in the Zoom chat, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Uh, yeah. Uh, from host host, uh, if you have for Enrique, please ask them here and keep the conversation going over. Uh, uh, Robert and Isabel, is there a way to obfuscate sensitive application constants within an Android app, or is this? Okay, yeah, that's the topic I have mentioned with uh, the uh, the strings. They are not encrypted by um, um, so if um, by uh, if you're using a rate or a prower. What you can do is generate the values in real time. Uh, if it's a constant, it's probably not a good idea. You can use native code. If you Google for the article I mentioned, that would explain how to how to solve it. It's a bit more complex because it involves NDK and um, some uh, using some um, cryptographic solution, but that makes the trick. Uh, solo to everyone. How about third uh, party third party public API keys that we need to run the SDK in our app? Any good suggestion to make this secure? Well, same thing. Um, yeah, you could use the secure library to encrypt them uh, uh, using native code if required. Um, so uh, I think that's probably the two. Uh, for better things that you could do. And uh, Robert Anisova, again, if Min Minify enable is enabled, is having a ProWare rules pro is still necessary? Yes, I believe it is. You need to keep the ProWare uh, rules file um, still for uh, R8, which is weird. It should have been called pro, uh, R8 uh, minus rules.pro, but yeah, you need a configuration files. 
any idea on the actual pricing, just an estimate would do maybe an example. Uh, they don't have the, the price public on their website. You need to query them. So um, I contacted them for this bank project that was eight years ago. Uh, I think the license at that time was in the range of eight to 15, uh, I think that's the good I got, eight to 15,000 uh, euros or dollars. Uh, yeah, so it's, um, of course, it can be a deterrent for uh, small companies or small startups. Thank you too, Robert. Robert is writing, thanks for the presentation. Thank you too, Nikita. What do you mean that Firebase has, what do you mean that Firebase has its root check? So it's, um, it's particularly called, uh, let me say how it is. Um, I'll, I'll upload anyway later my slides and insert them on Twitter so you can access them, but uh, where, I have this somewhere, right? Second pro, ah yeah, in uh, common utils uh, dot is root. I'll write it here on the chat as well. But essentially, you just need to check if um, there is uh, there are like this super user APK or um, this uh, file, and just checking if one of those two files exists. It's the same that Firebase is doing. So uh, I think we, Yanetian, I think we might be done. Uh, We're done. I will end the recording now. Thank you for your question. Oh, we have looks like one more question here. Oh uh, yeah, someone mentioned that they noticed the APK had different NDK after five. Yeah, I've seen that before. The problem is that when you upload them in Google Play, sometimes Google Play might be doing weird things. So I, I had that case. I don't know where I saw it or, or I had it or I was discussing on the Slack or something. But yeah, I, I've, I've seen it as well. Since that that happens when you. Um, distributed through this uh, through um, um, Google Play, for example. All right, folks, I will be ending the recording now.